Shepard. It's just a party and he asked me. He's really nice. Yeah, to you, maybe. You guys getting some good work done over here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds like it. What's the bright one? Uh, Mizar. It's a double star. Good. The one next to it? Uh, Alcor. Good, Biederman. And the one next to that? Um, uh, I don't know. It's McGrath's. I don't think so. Well, you just said you didn't know. Well, it's not McGrath. It's it's something else. Look. It's south, about 10 degrees. That's yeah, probably a satellite. Let's uh, take another picture. We'll send it to Dr. Wolf. Yes, sir. It's McGrath. It's not McGrath. It is. It's not. Fella. Do I know you? Why are you going in such a hurry?
troops from abroad. Tragedy struck today as a charter aircraft carrying an army unit returning from duty in Japan crashed this morning into the waters of the Puget Sound. White House press Sound. office says Secretary of the Treasury Rittenhouse is resigning because his wife is sick. <laughs> so who passed Rittenhouse to Hamlet? Uh, AFL-CIO wanted him off the Council of Economic Advisors for not supporting the pension bill, and the president's going to need labor next fall. And state's still fuming about the trade office screw-up at the GAs. Pentagon is unhappy with his readiness reduction for polls. Greenspan dislikes him. Christ, who didn't this guy piss off? No wonder the wife's sick. <laughs> She's not sick. She's a drunk. How do you know that? Um, Mike Woodward over at Treasury. Mrs. Rittenhouse started drinking a couple of years ago when her husband had a series of affairs. Stepped it up last summer after their son died of leukemia. You want to do something on the price that wives pay? What else? Mike Woodward, wife, three kids. He's been after me for months, so threw him a breakfast and hit him up about Rittenhouse. Bob Campbell's leaving, mm. so midnight Saturday anchor ship's opening up. Yeah, wh why would I want to give up the White House for a graveyard weekend? No, 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 so. not, not for you, for me. No. Bad. Uh, we'll talk about this later. If very calm. The president will be back from Camp David tomorrow. Business news, Ira? Beth. You know what, just uh, keep working on Rittenhouse. Maybe Mike's available for dinner. You know, do the usual research, background Thank information. I'll talk you know. to you about it lunch. Okay. That's it. <clears throat> Beth, wait. Listen, Beth, what if it wasn't... Oh, God, Jenny, please. Permanent. Look, like, honey, this is how it works. You've done two years of research, now do three as a segment right. producer, five on air, doing domestic features, another two in some cholera-ridden hellhole, and then, it, it, you know what, I'll quit if they don't give you a weekend anchor shot. Hello, kid. Are you protecting me or just holding me back? Yes. Okay. Written house, tape and text on my desk by 4 okay. o'clock tomorrow, yes. and then we'll drop in the reverses for the 5. Okay. At this moment right now, Thank you. The pretty little girls are walking down the aisle, they're spreading flowers. The twins, the twins, what are their names? Susanna. They're yeah. walking down the aisle and they're dropping rose petals Mother. and everyone's smiling That's at really them. And now she's idea. walking down the aisle. Yes, okay. and she stands beside him and the priest says, judge. dearly beloved. Judge. And the judge says, blah, 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 sickness and health, blah, 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 blah. Do you, Jason Lerner, take um, chlorine, <laughs> what <laughs> she might call it? <laughs> what? Chloe. What did I say? You said, you said chlorine. Her name's Chloe. Uh oh. <laughs> well, it's still a terrible name. Yeah. <laughs> Jason says, lie, 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 till death do his part, blah, blah, blah. And she says yes, and he says yes, and it's kissy, 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 and congratulations. <sighs> Jenny, you now have a new stepmother who is two years older than you. Well, anyway, as much as I would like to stay here and get silly with you, Mom, I can't. I gotta go. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry about this. We'll get over it. I love you. I love you, too. Mm. Be good. I was with the secretary since he's been governor of Connecticut. Came to Washington with him. I moved here because I was dedicated to his career. I trusted the man. And then he fucked me. He what? No, I didn't have sex with him. I should say, I didn't have sex with him, but somebody sure did. He was about to come out, so he resigned. But because I was hired from outside the government pool, I don't get conveyed to the next secretary, so now I'm out of job because he couldn't keep his hands off women. Do you have proof? He thinks he was being so clever. He had a private phone line installed in his office. Nobody else could answer it. I picked it up once, said hello, and it's nobody home. It rings, he shuts the door. Why not hang a sign? Do you have a name? <laughs> this is what I get for talking to the press. I'm selling my soul right now. I can feel it. I can feel it. I name a name and get someone into trouble. So you do have a name. 
just her first name. Oh, my God, I'm going to say it. Ellie. Ellie? Nothing else? I think the president knows about it, too. Overheard the secretary talking to him about her. Isn't Washington sick? Actually, we're looking for your mom. Is she around? My mom's sick. She's not here. Gosh, I love boats. Are you going on a trip? Yeah. That's exciting. Looks like a like a long trip, huh? So, listen, do you know where you're going? She's going back to the house. Hey, you want to stop that? Lily, please. Lily, that's a pretty name. Lily. Go on. Right there. If we could just get a minute of your time. What do you want from me? Well, we'd like to talk about your resignation. My wife is sick. She's in the hospital. That's why I resigned. Everybody knows this. Well, we could talk about your wife, or we could just talk about Ellie. Turn the camera off. If you want to talk to me, turn it off. We know everything. Nobody knows everything. Well, we know about the secret phone lines and the whispered calls to the president, and about a secretary of the Treasury who's kept his entire department in the dark about what he's really doing, about a cover story about his resignation that just fell through. I mean, sir, do you want me to go on? And you're just going to break it? Well, that's what we do for a living. Well, congratulations. You now have the biggest story in history. Good luck to you. Personally, I think it's a mistake to run the story, but hey, what the hell? Why not? What difference does anything make anymore? Look. I know you're just a reporter, but you used to be a person, right? I wanted to be with my family. Can you understand that? Resigns because of a mistress named Ellie. Biggest story in history? <sighs> what an ego. Now, if it was the president... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, the president has a mistress named Ellie, and Rittenhouse pretends that he's having the affair and takes the fall and resigns, and the president buys him a yacht? Take care of your car. Just step back to the my car. Get a car here. Got it.
Let's go. Come this way, please. Morton Etchkin, Ms. Lerner. I'm expected back at MSNBC at 6. But I think I should be there. People knew about the Manhattan Project, you know. And they kept it a secret. That was just the creation of the atom bomb. Tom Beck, I understand you've come into some information. Ms. Lerner was just expressing her lack of enthusiasm for matters of national security, where journalistic competitiveness is at stake. Mr. President, I'm not interested in using Ellie to further my career. What do you know about Ellie? I know you should have picked a better cover story than a sick wife. See, what did I tell you? We'd always thought the deadline for going public was the publication of the budget, since we've spent more money than we can hide. But the budget comes out in two weeks. I don't suppose I could convince you to sit on this for two weeks. No such thing as two weeks in the news business. And I can't appeal to your sense of what's in the nation's best interest. Well, I always thought the truth was in the nation's best interest. You want to hold it? What if we go public in 48 hours? Now, that's doable, isn't it? That would be very difficult, Mr. President. Morton, if she knows, how long can it be before CNN or the Post breaks the story? Now, this was never going to be a secret as long as you wanted it to be. Give us two days, Mr. Turner. You'll get second row center at the White House press conference. Now, from what I know of your career, that's a promotion. I want exclusivity. Now, listen, young lady. This is a presidential favor. I'm letting you go because I don't want another headache. And I'm trusting you because I know what this can do for your career. It might seem that we have each other over the same barrel, Miss Lerner, but it just seems that way. I want the... Want? M may I? May I have the first question? We'll see you Tuesday, Miss Lerner. Who's working late? Yep. How's Rittenhouse going? Uh, no sign of the wife yet. Is she missing? No, we're still working on it. We'll get there. Oh, no, it's a dull story. I, I promise you next time we'll get you something more exciting. Great. Are you okay? Yeah. Want to come to dinner with us? 
I can't. I can't. I got... I have plans. Oh, okay. Well, we'll see you tomorrow. Champagne, miss? Martini. Up. Big. Good. I missed you. I mean, we missed you yesterday. Uh, I must say, I'm... I'm disturbed that you didn't come to our wedding. Jason, you promised. I know I promised. Uh, but it was a beautiful event, and I missed her. You should have been there. The twins, they were running around like mad and throwing flowers. And it was wonderful, especially Emma, you know, the little one. She loves you. She, she adores beautiful. you. Yes. She missed you, too. All right. This is from us for you. Are you not going to open it? You can exchange them if you don't like them. Jenny, I know this is hard. I just want you to be happy. Happy? Well, I would like to propose a toast to happiness and to... Mm. Mm. Well, are we going to have an evening or not? Jenny, I know that you hate me. I know that you have terrible things that you want to say to me. You have to get over it. Life, life goes on. Life goes on, okay. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> we'll see. What's so funny about life goes on? About life? <laughs> Life going on. I don't think it's funny that life goes on. Dad, you need to get back together with Mom. Because she's all alone in the world and she needs you right now, okay? Jenny, I just got married. I know, I know. And I'm sorry, Chloe, this has nothing to do with you. Well, it has to do something for me, for Christ's sake. She's insane. I have to apologize. My daughter. It's not your fault. <laughs> All right, I have to go. Thank you. I know you think I'm a bad person. I'm really not. And I don't hate you. I gotta, I just, I gotta go. President Gilbert, vai começar o seu discurso. Because for her, it doesn't. Excuse me, Jenny. Hey. <laughs> well, what are you uh, doing here? Uh, yeah. Did Stuart send you here without telling me? No. That's... You know what? If Stuart thinks that he can push me out of the way, Ms. Lerner, hi, Beth. Right this way. I've got you right down here. Okay. You'll find you for the first question, then you're on your own. Hey, how are you? Yeah. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, please. The president will begin by addressing the nation. Please hold your questions until he's finished his remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the United States. Hello, everybody. Ten seconds, Mr. President. Five, four. Good evening. 
A few minutes ago, the United States ambassadors to every country in the world told the leaders of those nations what I am about to tell you. It's a bit complicated, so it will take some time, so I hope you will bear with me, hear what I have to say. A little over a year ago, two American astronomers, Marcus Wolf and Leo Biedemann, working on a mountaintop in Arizona, Shh. saw something Nobody say in the anything. night sky that caused them great concern. A comet. But the comet was, well, there was a remote possibility that the comet was on a path that could bring it into direct contact with the Earth. Now, we get hit all the time by rocks and meteors, some of them the size of cars, some no bigger than your hand. But the comet we discovered is the size of New York City, from the north side of Central Park to the Battery, about seven miles long. Put another way, this comet is larger than Mount Everest. It weighs 500 billion tons. Chances are this thing is astrophysicists, geologists, and climatologists. Where the hell is science? Okay, how is everyone talking to Tel Aviv? I want it everywhere. Hail Bob stand ups. And graphics, I need graphics. Comets began far out in space. There was left over from the creation of the solar system after the planets were formed billions of years ago. Now, these chunks of space debris are in an elongated orbit around our sun. But every now and then, one of them gets bumped, or like a billiard ball on a pool table, and is knocked into a different orbit. Now, if this comet continues on its path around the sun and keeps its present course, sometime on August 16th, roughly a year from now, there's a chance that we might have impact. So for the past eight months, the United States and Russia have been building the largest spaceship ever constructed. It's being built in orbit around the Earth, and we call it the Messiah. And right now, a team of American astronauts and one Russian are at Cape Canaveral in Florida. In two months, they will leave on the shuttle Atlantis to board the Messiah. This is the crew that will stop the comet. I'd like the world to meet some extraordinary people. First is Mission Commander Oren Monash. Commander, would you introduce us to your team? I would be honored, sir. Pilot Andrea Baker. Medical Officer Gus Partenza. From Russia, Nuclear Specialist Colonel Mikhail Tolchinsky. Navigator Mark Simon. And Rendezvous Pilot Spurgeon Tanner. Hello, Hello, Mr. Hello, Mr. President. Mr. President. Captain Tanner. You flew six shuttle missions. You were the last man to walk on the moon, weren't you, sir? Yes, sir, uh, but Orrin here will be doing most of the flying on this one. I'll just be taking us down to the, uh, you know, the comet surface. Well, it's good to know we're going to have your kind of experience up there, Captain. Thank you, sir. Godspeed to you all. We're counting on you. Thank you, sir. We've got Beijing, Rome, St. Paulo, Cairo, Berlin. Does anyone know how big the one was that killed all the dinosaurs? Something majestic, mysterious, and with the fanfare for the intro and the theme to the long promos. Well, that's what he's saying. Bring that up again. He'll scare the shit out of him. of our way of life. Our society will continue as normal. Work will go on. You will pay your bills. There will be no hoarding. There will be no sudden profiteering. I'm freezing all wages, all prices. What a bottle of water cost you yesterday? It will cost you tomorrow. Now I'll take a few questions. <laughs> Ms. Lerner? Uh, Jenny Lerner, MSNBC. Jenny um, Lerner? Son of a bitch. Um, Mr. President, why wasn't this announcement made sooner? Well, until we knew we could build the rocket and the comet could be intercepted, we saw no reason to alarm the planet. Oh, sir. <laughs> Do you have another question, Ms. Lerner? Yeah. Um, is, is there a connection between the comet and the recall of American troops from abroad? Our fighting men and women are coming home because we felt it prudent, in light of domestic security <laughs> concerns, to have them available. Although I certainly hope we don't need to use them. Next question. <laughs> Actually, Mr. President, if, if, if just one final question, sir. Um, MSNBC has 
learned that Secretary Rittenhouse did not leave for the reasons announced by your administration. In fact, isn't it true, sir, that not everyone in your administration is convinced that the Messiah will save us? Secretary Rittenhouse served his country with full devotion. He resigned for personal reasons. Now, I can promise you this, Ms. Lerner, all of you, everyone in this room and everyone listening to my voice, that at some point over the next 10 months, all of us will entertain our worst fears and concerns. But I can also promise you this, <laughs> life will go on. We will prevail. Mr. President, please. Sally? Sir, sir, what is the comet's name? The two scientists who found the comet were killed in a car crash while racing from their observatory to alert the world. So we named it for them. Wolf Biedemann. <laughs> Leo Biedemann. <laughs> I said it again. Sir. Leo, is he talking about you? He I'm is, isn't he? Listen, why were the Russians brought into the construction phase of this mission and not in the Janie, other... Janie, get the door. Well, we have the technology to build the ship. They have the technology to make it go. Is someone at the door, Pete Leo? You've been watching live coverage of President Tom. I can't believe this. This is so weird. Dr. Wolf from Astronomy Club? Yeah, I guess. I think it's really neat. Nobody on our block discovered the world was going to end before. He's still very much alive. He's, he's still alive, everyone. He's right here, and he's still alive. Okay. <laughs> As far as we know, what happened was that Let's Dr. Wolf saw the comet in my photograph, <laughs> so he shared the discovery with me. And then he was killed in that crash, and everything got mixed up in Washington, so the president thought I was dead, too. Jasmine. How does it feel having your name on it? I don't want anyone to think that I'm trying to take something away from Dr. Wolf, because I'm not. But it's kind of cool. Jason. You know, you're going to have sex a lot more now than anyone else in our class. Really? Thank you for your sexual insight, Mr. Thurman. You can sit down now. Famous people always get sex, Mr. Perry. That's the main reason it's good to be famous. A nuclear reactor in space? Yes. Isn't that dangerous? <laughs> no, no, no. This is all Russian design, the Russian science. Uh, the same people who designed Chernobyl. Chernobyl? Chernobyl almost worked. <laughs> so what happens after you plant the bomb? Well, we have seven hours. We're going to keep the bombs inside the comet. I'm going to follow these two. I don't okay. trust that combination. Well, after uh, seven hours, the 14-hour rotational cycle of the comet, right, hey, Spence? <laughs> we're going to get married. God knows I want to marry you. But the day I get back, the last thing we do is step inside of the church. I don't do church as well. Because there's only seven hours of darkness, and then the sun starts hitting the surface of the planet, and it causes... These are your orders. <laughs> Upon first entering Earth's atmosphere, proceed immediately up the exterior of the mother ship. It's gonna... When the sun hits the surface, there's gonna be explosive outgassings that are very dangerous. Gus, he's seven. Brittany. You boys were what? Four and six when I went to the moon? Now, you saw me go into space seven times, didn't you? Eh? I came back every time, didn't I? <laughs> Your mother and I used to play a game when she was still alive. Now, the game was, if there was a chance I might not be coming back, she wouldn't say it and I wouldn't say it. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, Fish. Hey, Mitch. How about a beer? You remember my boys, don't you? Steve and Dwight? Of course I do. Gentlemen, welcome to Houston. Thank you. Let me steal you a man for a second. Can I take your picture, please? Oh. Thank you. <laughs> so, what do you think of the crew? Heroes all. It's the finest group I ever had the privilege of working with. Yeah, yeah. Off the record, then. Well, they've been trained in ways I'll never understand. They're smarter and better shape than we ever were in the old days. They're sober, serious. 
I guess I'd be a little happy about this whole thing if I thought they'd any more scared as I am. <laughs> well, they're not scared of dying. They're just scared of looking bad on TV. Now look, I wish I'd been to the moon. I got respect for everybody who's gone to the moon. But this mission ain't going to the moon. <laughs> That's right. Frank Gifford, he was a great football player in his time, but if he played now, he'd get his ass busted. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. All I'm saying is the moon did not have a rotational cycle of 14 hours. I mean, this is, we only have seven hours of dark when the sun's not up to land on this thing. It was light when he landed. This is going to be dark. We're not going to be able to see. <laughs> you can't see now, guys. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. We're still in right now. Wait, what? We can do it. We can do it. I woke up this morning, and I realized none of you want me here. You don't even really know who I am, which is OK. I walked on the moon, but I didn't belong to you. I belong to your daddies. Now, if I ask you to ask your daddies what I meant to them, to explain to you what I'm doing here, that's only going to make things worse. So what do we do? You haven't trained for this mission. We respect you. Appreciate that. But you're here. You're here because the powers that be think we need a familiar face on this trip. You're here for public relations. No, I'm here because the powers that be know that I'm the only person on this mission who's ever landed on the moon. And I have 500 landings on aircraft carriers. We've trained on... On, on flights. Right? And this, it's, it's not a video game, son. It really isn't. <laughs> it really isn't. <laughs> Controllers, we're at T minus 30 seconds and counting. Let's take a close look. Views look good. Logs and LH2 are pressurized. 10, 9. Flight, we'll go eight, for auto sequence. Roger, Jerry. Good Seven, luck and Godspeed, Alex. Thanks, Mitch. Four, three, two, one. Propelled by 500,000 pounds of liquid fuel, the shuttle crew heads toward their initial destination. When the crew enters the Messiah, they will find a payload of eight nuclear devices that will eventually be used to blow up the comet. The Messiah itself will be powered by an experimental nuclear propulsion system that was originally created for a very different purpose. That program was called Orion. Now, with the help of Russian engineers, a technology designed to propel weapons of mass destruction will power the ship that will intercept the greatest threat our planet has ever faced. Orion burn in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Zero. Okay, Beth, White House reactions. Marianne, the whole world watching. We have enough satellite space? Send me it up, please. Tim, Mission Control in Houston. Ira, the science guy's lined up. If they got a PhD, we own them. All right, this is the most important story of our lives. Let's not muck it up. Stuart, what about me? You're on the anchor desk, what? and you could have been there a lot sooner. What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. Don't ever hold back a story from me again. Roger, Houston, we're looking good here. Jesus, that's big. Holy shit. Gospody. Wow. 
sweet mother of God. All certain brings are open. Master R. Zoth. Roger. And the detonator system is safe. feet to stand off. R dot three, five X, two Y. Five hundred feet, R dot point three, three X, one point five Y. Go for auto trajectory. We're there. Residuals are null. Disengage Orion. Orion disengage. You're on by from. presentation of MSNBC News with Jenny Lerner. Good evening. Sometime in the next hour, the Messiah mission will enter its most critical phase, the interception of Wolf Biederman and the setting of the nuclear devices that will deflect it off its collision course with Earth. But first, Captain Spurgeon Tanner will have to guide the spacecraft through the blizzard of rocks, sand, and ice that make up the comet's tail, or coma. The crew will have to complete its work before the sun rises. Sublimator looks good, Mick. Just engage the auto now. I'm eyeballs out from here on in. How come that doesn't make me feel any better? I heard that. Lights on. Camera's on. On the Mississippi River in Mark Twain's time, there were riverboat pilots who only knew a few miles of the river. I mean, condition changed so much you couldn't know the whole trip. Floods, sandbars, fallen logs. It was all a riverboat pilot could do was to know his little piece of the puzzle. So, for the next few hours, this is my ship. We start our approach. the cargo bay of the Messiah. Now, these images are delayed by approximately 20 seconds due to the distance they must travel. Okay, you can see that the image is breaking up a bit. Uh, Houston is prepared for this. They've informed us that due to the uncertain makeup of the comet's coma, they're unsure whether or not transmission will be possible. Okay, now, now it appears we're losing reception here. Okay, we've, we've lost picture now. But we will stay on the air. We'll stay with you through all of this. Prop 96%. DAC is in descent. Roger. Decent. I'm 
primary thrusters. Thrusters. What's the descent rate? Three feet per second. Two. Five other pitons. Pitons fired. Depressurizing bay. Opening payload doors. Don't let that little bit of gravity down there go to your heads. <laughs> okay. Start the clock. going according to schedule, the astronauts should now be placing the moles on the comet's surface. The moles are, well, they're what they sound like. They are drilling machines that burrow to a depth of 100 meters, where they wait to be detonated. Each one carries a 5,000 kiloton warhead. It's taking too long. Yep. What happens if they do not get off the comet's surface in time? The sun striking the comet will cause the temperature to rise 350 degrees in just a few minutes, activate the high-speed gas jets. Well, if that happens, it will be like trying to work in a minefield. Mark, what's your mole four readout? Mole four running true at 75 feet. Son of a bitch. What? It's stuck. Try backing it up. What'd you get? 75 feet. That enough? No, that'll just break pieces off the surface. That's not deep enough. Yeah, fish, I know that's not deep enough. I'm going in. Or no. No, I need to see if I can free it up. Stand by, tether attached. All right, I got you. Orin, suit pressure 3.5. Come on, come on. How's my time? 1857. Another six minutes, they won't have time to get back to us. Blow the tether. Let's go get them. If we go after them, we may not have enough fuel to get off the surface. Blow the goddamn tether. All three at depth. We're heading your way, Orrin. Calculate exactly how much prop we need to get off this rock. We'll shut it down when we hit it. Will do. It opens up into a cave down here. The mole got jammed against the side. Okay, fish, team two in location four. Give me your hand. What the hell happened? I don't know. I don't know. Everything was going great. We got jammed up at 75 feet.
little more, a little more. Shut it down. Uh, they always put extra in this tank. Fish, shut it down. We're losing one. It's got escape velocity a thousand feet and climbing. Mark McHale, get the hell out of there! are at depth. Luke's hot and ready. We lost potential to explosive outgassing. And Monash is injured. We have to go get gas. There's no time for that. Repressurize the cargo bay. He's going to die out there. We can still find him. He has a beacon. I, I don't have time to argue with you. Just sit down. Quiet. Use most of our propellant to get us out of the coma. We can't just leave him. We have to go back. If we go back for Gus, we all die. We can't just leave him in space. Sit down, man. Sit down. It's okay. The Messiah has safely lifted off the comet. But sadly, Gus Partenza has been lost. Gus Partenza, a native of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and graduate of Carnegie Mellon University, joined the NASA space program shortly after completing his medical training at Duke University. Dr. Partenza was selected specifically for this mission, not only for his medical expertise, but also for his dedication to the advancement of space technology.
loss of Dr. Gus Partenza and with Oren Monash injured, Captain Spurgeon Tanner is now in charge of the mission. The Messiah has successfully docked with the Orion-powered boosters and is now prepared to detonate the bombs planted on Wolf Biederman. The Messiah's exterior-mounted camera will show us the detonation, but not before being temporarily blocked out by the nuclear blast. Once again, let me remind you there is a 20-second delay, so when the picture comes back to us, the comet should already have been knocked off its present course. Prepare to remove safeties and fire. Safeties removed. Weapons armed. So now we're just waiting for the picture to come back. Yes, I'm still here. Live in 10 seconds. Cue the president. Mr. President, five, four, three. Hello, America. It is my unhappy duty to report to you that the Messiah has failed. This computer enhanced radar image from Houston shows how the detonation succeeded, however, did not destroy the comet. There are now two pieces. One six miles wide, the other a mile and a half. Both are still on the path towards Earth. We've lost communication with the Messiah spacecraft, although we continue to track it visually. We don't know how many are alive. We don't know their condition. Now we have to make some decisions together. What do we do? You have a choice. We have a choice right now. Ever since the comet was discovered, we've been hoping and working for the best. But we've also been planning for the worst. Our strategy has been twofold. First, our strategic missile command is preparing to coordinate with the Russians a massive strike of Titan missiles to intercept the comets. If we can deflect these comets enough, they will bounce harmlessly off our atmosphere and head on out into space. Unfortunately, the Titans cannot be launched until the comets are only a few hours away. And while we are confident the missile attack will succeed, it is only prudent that we now take cautionary steps to ensure the continuation of our way of life. To guarantee that there will be enough of us left to rebuild a new world in the unlikely event that the comets do strike the Earth. So, in the soft limestone of Missouri, We've been preparing a network of immense caves, and they're almost finished. And we can put a million people in them. 
and that million people can survive there underground for two years until the air clears and the dust settles. Now, the cave is more than a dormitory. It's our new Noah's Ark. We're storing seeds and seedlings, plants, animals, enough to start over. On August 10th, a computer will randomly select 800,000 Americans to join the 200,000 scientists, doctors, engineers, teachers, soldiers, and artists who have already been chosen. Other countries are preparing similar caves along whatever lines they feel are best to preserve their way of life. This is ours. Beginning tonight and continuing until the crisis passes, I am declaring a state of martial law. The armed forces and the National Guard are working with local law enforcement. A national curfew begins at midnight tonight. Now, wherever you are, go home. Stay off the roads after sunset. Crimes against persons or property will be dealt with swiftly and harshly. News stations around the nation are being faxed copies of the lottery procedure as we speak, and they'll be broadcasting the details to you in a few moments. I wish... No. Wishing is wrong. That's the wrong word right now. That's not what I mean. What I mean is, I believe in God. Relax. I know a lot of you don't, but I still want to offer a prayer for our survival. Mine included. Because I believe that God, whomever you hold that to be, hears all prayers, even if sometimes the answer is no. So may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord lift up his divine countenance upon you and give you peace. pre-selected will be notified within the next few minutes. For the rest, on the night of August 10th, those whose social security numbers have been randomly selected by computer will be notified. While some Americans over 50 years of age have been pre-selected for the ARC due to their expertise in a necessary field of study, no men and women over 50 in the general population will be included in the lottery. The evacuation of those who have been selected for the ARC will take no longer than two days beginning on August 12th. During this two-day period, no unofficial travel will be permitted. Those selected will be taken by bus and train to the underground ARC site by military personnel. Civil defense teams have been formed in every town with a population over 5,000. They will distribute supplies and organize group shelters in underground parking facilities and other appropriate sites. Construction plans, equipment lists, and locations for securing the necessary Hello? provisions, along with yes, this is Ellen how to grow your own food underground and how to purify water, are now available on the internet at We've been pre-selected. Chuck, Chuck, where are you going? Our phone, they could be calling. Beginning on August 9th. The only phones that ring will be those of the people selected. That's it. That's all there is. The interior camera circuitry is shot. Can we get back into the cargo bay to reroute the video functions? The starboard cargo porthole's blown. We could go in with the EVAs, but there's not much left in the life support packs. 
We should be able to raise Houston on the low band once we get closer. And the Orion is still functioning? The system check was okay, but I don't know about the radiation shielding. So if we fire it up, we beat the comet back to Earth. But we may end up glowing in the dark. <laughs> okay. So, uh... Anybody? Let's go home. knowing that I'm not going to be called. I don't think I've ever been happier. I've even stopped smoking. What are you going to do with all that extra money you save? Do you know the National Gallery is saving all of the art? They're shipping it to the caves. I've given them my beautiful 18th century desk from New England and all the shirt and silver. I really feel like I'd protected something when I gave them. You should see my apartment. <laughs> There's nothing there. It's practically Japanese. Seems kind of unfair that I got picked. You know, I'm not a doctor or a scientist. People need continuity. Everyone knows you. And they trust you. But I can't help you. Don't worry about me. I'm going to be happy as long as I know you're going to live. Mr. Hotcher? Who did I think I was going to be when I bought that bike? Wow. Every kid on the block wants one now. Every parent on the block hates you for it. Well, thank you, Leo. That's the best news I've had in years. Um, sir. Can you give me a hand over here for a second? Yes, sir. I just want to get these bars up. Hello, Mrs. Hodgson. Hi, Leo. Florida, Leah. a mob attacked and killed a Miami oh, rental yard right operator yeah, right who was charging $5,000 an hour for backhoe and tractor rentals. Same old crap Williams on the TV. I'm sick of it, you know. Arizona. Mrs. Hotchner. Sarah's on the hill. Thank you. Where were you today? I've been looking all over for you. Why weren't you at school? My dad said I didn't have to go. He said there's no point. I talked to civil defense. They said if you and I got married, we'd be family and I could get you in. Well, what about my parents? They're not your family. I don't want to go without my parents. You don't have to. I'm the famous Leo Biederman, and I haven't used my fame for anything. But I got them to let your family go, too. You, this is your only chance to survive.
For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall understand fully, even as I have been told. children didn't bring any real books to read, did you know that? I brought Moby Dick and Huckleberry Finn and Baker and Simon and never read them. Now, I'm afraid to ask you, have you ever read Melville or Twain? Hmm? Hey, I'm a child of the movies, Fish. Okay, I see. So, you got a shitty deal, all right? Don't worry about me. Yeah. I mean, that really... Don't worry about me. My whole life, I... You know, just for guys like us. You and, you and I, we're, we're the same. I know about that. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta be the best. Oh, I see. Be the best. Sometimes I see uh, flashes of light, you know, like uh, colors. I fall asleep and I dream, but there's a part of me that's always awake, and I can see myself dreaming. Call you fish. <laughs> really? Spurgeon, sturgeon, fish. It took about 15 minutes of my first day at the Naval Academy. You know. Your kids go there? Yeah, they did. They did. And they're good men, both of them. I don't see as much of them as uh, I used to when Mary was alive. You don't have to talk about it. It's okay. No, oh, it's okay. You're a married man, you know what it's like. I mean, every marriage has its good years and its bad years. We ended on a great year. Yeah. Anyway, let's get started. Moby Dick, chapter one. 
Call me your <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. us. IDs, please. Yeah. There's four of us. Lewis? This is my wife, Sarah. We have a marriage license. Um, right here. Okay. All right, let's go. Let's move it out. Mom? Wait. Sir, my parents are coming, too. Wait, wait. The hot The hot are coming, too. H-O-T-C-H-N-E-R. It's not here. No, no, no. It has to be there. Victor sent their names to the White House. They're not there. Just check the goddamn list again, sir. Sir, sir. Neil, give me your bag. They must be there. Ellen, give me your bag, sweetie. No, they're not on the list. Wait, I'm sorry. Wait, Let's go. We have sir, to go. Sir, sir. Can, understand. Neil, can you check it one more time? On the list. They said your names are on the list. Sarah, I put them on the list. We're not on the list. No, but I need the Biedermans list. on the bus now. I want to stay with you. What? No, 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 no. no. Get her no, on the bus. No, no, no. Yes, I need to stay with, to with you. Sarah. Sarah, you need to go. No, I have to stay with you. Listen, Come on. I'm not going anywhere Please, without you. Please, can you understand? Honey, Sarah, you I don't know what you're doing. Come or stay, young lady. This bus is moving on. He's on the bus. He's on the bus. Get on the bus. Let's go. Chuck, we'll work it out when we get there. for you. Yes, this is she. It's Robin Lerner, my mother. When? Uh, 61. I'll come down there then. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jenny, she wanted to do something. inside the car. You're getting sick. Please. I want to talk to you. Please, come. I don't give a shit. Go home and tell it to Chloe. I can't. She left me. She's with her mother. They both got scared. Come. I want to talk to you. I need you. How does it feel? I feel like an orphan. Jenny! Jenny! Stop.
section leader for Orange 254. Remember that. That's where you'll be calling home the next two years. So gather your things and follow me to the orientation gallery. to go back for Sarah. Leo. Mom, I'm going. Don, what are you doing? I'm giving you something to trade. That's what I'm doing. I want this. That's enough. God damn it. Just take care of yourself, OK? I don't know. He hasn't returned my call in over two weeks. Excuse me, Jenny. Yeah? Your father's here. Hello. Hello. I can't stay long. I'm leaving the city, but I wanted to show you something. I wanted to show you that you are not an orphan. I have proof that you're not an orphan. Here. Look. Where's Mom? Behind the camera. She took this? Mm-hmm. This one, too. She was such an artist, don't you think so? You don't remember when you take them, hmm? I'm five years old. How would I remember that? Well, some people do remember when they were five years old. It was such a beautiful day. All alone on the beach. And of course, she would have been in the picture. But uh, there was no one else to hold the camera. And she insisted. You know how she is. How she was. Jenny. It was such a good day for all of us. I do remember. Here's what we're looking at. All of the Titans have been launched. We still won't know if they've made a difference. The comets have to travel for a while before the radar tracking stations can see if they've been pushed to a safe course that'll bypass the Earth. So, one more time, we have to wait.
Our missiles have failed. Comets are still headed for Earth. And there's nothing we can do to stop them. So, this is it. If the world does go on, it will not go on for everyone. We have now been able to calculate the comet's final trajectories, and we have determined where they're going to strike. The smaller of the two comets, Biedemann, will hit first, somewhere along the Atlantic seaboard, probably in the waters off the coast of Cape Hatteras, in just under 12 hours at 4.35 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The impact of the comet is going to be, well, disastrous. There will be a very large tidal wave moving quickly through the Atlantic Ocean. It will be 100 feet high, traveling at 1,100 miles an hour. It's faster than the speed of sound. As the wave reaches shallow water, it's going to slow down, but the wave height, depending on the depth of the shelf off the coast, will be anywhere from 1,000 to 3,500 feet high. Where the land is flat, the wave will wash inland 600 to 700 miles. The wave will hit our nation's capital 40 minutes after impact. New York City, Boston, Atlanta, Philadelphia, all will be destroyed. If you have any means of getting away from the path of this wave, leave now. The impact of the larger comet will be nothing less than an extinction level event. It will strike land in Western Canada three hours after Biedemann. Within a week, the skies will be dark with dust from the impact and they will stay dark for two years. All plant life will be dead within four weeks. Animal life within a few months. So that's it. Good luck to us all. everyone for a minute. Uh, let's take a look at the big one. Now the outgassing has created a vent a half a mile wide and at least two miles deep. The comet gets close to the sun, the sun melts ice, ice turns to steam, you get a big hole. Okay? So, how many nukes we have left in the back? Four. Okay, if we can get the remaining bombs in that vent, there shouldn't be anything left of that comet bigger than a suitcase. Now, we can't do anything about the little one, but, uh, you know, it just might give them a chance. Now, without the Army codes, we're gonna have to wait to set the bomb timers until we get closer to Earth to raise Houston. We may not have enough life support left to get back into the cargo bay for the nukes, much less to work down on the comet. We sure as hell don't have enough propellant left in the Messiah to, uh, to maneuver with. How are we supposed to get back off the surface once we've, uh, once we've gone down there? We don't. Hey, look at the bright side. We'll all have high schools named after us. you were doing up there. Admiring the view, Houston. Fish, is that you? Yep. We don't have time to talk, Houston. 
There's nothing we can do about the smaller one, but we do have a plan. We need the Army codes for the last four nukes. Army codes? What the hell for? Mitch, we can do or we can teach. What's your pleasure? You get the Army codes. Get the goddamn codes! We have one helicopter that holds seven people. We can ferry six people to high ground in West Virginia and take Jenny to the Arch. Short stick goes. I always thought it was women and children first. If you get the short one, you can give up your seat. I'm sorry, Beth. Okay, honey. There's always a road. We'll be okay. Come on. Okay, that's it. Come on, hurry up. Come on. No, wait. What are you doing? We have to go now. Come on. Come on! So I thought it was the way it does come that we should be here because she likes it here. And, and I mean, we're on the 15th floor, so maybe we'll, we'll be okay. Can you say goodbye to Jenny? Come on! 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 Come Get her in. Get her in. Wait, there's too many. 
You don't have any time. Come on. You have to go Daddy, now. No, 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 no. Put this on. Daddy! Daddy, what are you doing? I want you to take the baby. What? No, 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 no. Yes, no arguments. No, 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 When I was 11, I took $32 from your wallet. When you were a baby, I, I once dropped you on your head. And you came to the studio and, and you brought those pictures. I lied when I said I didn't remember. I remember everything. I remember that we were right over there, and that's when Mom got that picture of the house. It was a perfect, happy day. I came down here to let you know that. Thank you. I've missed you since then.
Messiah, ready to begin our run. Are our families there yet? They're on their way, Messiah. Disengage autopath. Here we go. We're at Perigee. Wolf contact in four minutes, 45 seconds. We'll never be closer to home than we are. This is mommy. I miss you. I love you, mommy. I love you very, very much. David. You know what I want to say? I know. Contact in two minutes, 30 seconds. Oren, Marietta, it's at your folks' place up in Utah. We sent a plane for her, but she isn't here yet. Fish, the sons are both on active duty. We tried to get them back, but we couldn't get them here on time. I'm sorry. Well, Mitch, uh, I want to say goodbye to Mary. I want to tell her I love her. And that ever since we've been apart every day, I think about it. Mary, I'm coming on. Coming up on target 625 miles. Range 600 miles. Got there? <laughs> I can hear him, I know. Mary, I'm hugging you both right now. I'm holding you. 25 seconds. Prepare to synchronize the nukes. 23. 22. 21.
watched as the bombs shattered the second comet into a million pieces of ice and rock that burned harmlessly in our atmosphere and lit up the sky for an hour. Still, we were left with the devastation of the first. The waters reached as far inland as the Ohio and Tennessee valleys. It washed away farms and towns, forests and skyscrapers. But the water receded. The wave hit Europe and Africa too. Millions were lost. And countless more left homeless. But the waters receded. Cities fall, but they are rebuilt. And heroes die, but they are remembered. We honor them with every brick we lay, with every field we sow, with every child we comfort, and then teach to rejoice in what we have been re-given. Our planet, our home. So now, let us begin.